The call to obedience and the possibility of danger. Allow me to give some background information to our today's text. The children of Israel, and I want you to stay with me because this is a good story. All stories are good. This is a good story. If any of you like soap operas, read the book of Exodus. And I'm going to explain why. Allow me to provide background information to our today's text. The children of Israel or the Israelites or the Hebrews were descendants of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with God. Jacob's family moved to, Israel, to Egypt as at the invitation of Joseph during the time of a great famine. Joseph was one of Jacob's sons, became a great leader under the Egyptian pharaoh Jacob under the Egyptian pharaoh. Jacob's family grew into a large nation. So after everything that I have read in the scripture in this overview, if you don't remember all that I have said, remember that all of these folks were descendants of Abraham. The Abraham that God promised would be the father of many nations because of his obedience. Now let's fast forward. The Pharaoh, who knew and blessed all of Joseph and his kinfolks of that generation, had died. And a new Pharaoh comes in. But Israelites in the land remained fruitful and prosper. And the land was filled with them. But this new Pharaoh didn't know the history of Abraham, didn't know the history of Joseph and all of his kinfolks and their importance. Here begins the saga of the text offered today. So, we know about Moses being a critical vessel of God to lead God's chosen people out of the bondage in Egypt to the promised land. But do you know about two women by the name of Shephra and Pua? These women served as midwives to the Hebrew Israelite people as directed by the new Pharaoh. This new Pharaoh told the midwives to kill the Hebrew boys at birth, but to let the girls live. Why? Because the boys could possibly become very strong as they turn into men, and these men could have the opportunity to overpower the Egyptian pharaoh. It's always about power, isn't it? Even in this 21st century, it's always about power. That's why I say you can get some good stories. Now, I need to tell you, I struggled with this text because the book of Exodus is a compilation of stories that can be analyzed and debated. Some books can be read in a half a dozen different ways. Books are like music. Everyone knows what they like, what they understand, and what they can accept. One can read Exodus for the stories it contains or for its hidden meanings. But I know without a doubt that the Holy Spirit led me to preach this today. So don't overanalyze, like I initially did, whether the text is about being pro-life or pro-choice. Don't overanalyze whether or not the midwives lied. Don't overanalyze whether the lesson that should be learned today that it's okay to lie on behalf of God. I got an amen corner right there. And she's talking about commandment nine, don't bear false witness. But let's believe that the lesson must focus on the importance of being in relationship with God and that sometimes that can lead a vessel of God into danger. But that vessel must still be obedient. For obedience is better than sacrifice. 
Sacrifice is not limited to giving God tithes and sacrificial offerings. Now look now, that's important. Tithes and sacrificial offerings, that's important. But another type of sacrifice can be not holding on to your emotional safety. The safety of not being ridiculed due to your relationship with God. Being ashamed of God because you may be laughed at because of your relationship and witness on behalf of God. That is what is meant in this text today because the midwives feared God. Understand this, this wasn't about being afraid of God. When we think of fear, we think of being terrified of something. But this is about reverence and being in relationship with God, the Almighty One, the one who is more powerful at that time than Pharaoh and more powerful than anyone you can think of in this 21st century. The Almighty One, the Omnipotent One, the All-Powerful One, the All-Knowing One. So here's what I want to share with you as life applications from this text. First, nothing stops God's plans. Nothing stops God's plans. Not our personal or selfish agendas or someone else's selfish agendas against us will ever prohibit God's ultimate plan. Why? I just said it. Because God is all powerful. The midwives knew this and had that type of trust in God. You see, there's always a process with God. Before Moses, there was Shifra and Pua. There would not have been a Moses if not for the midwives. Let me tell you what else I take away from this. We women have always played an important role in God's plan for humanity. Amen. I did get an amen out of that. We always, always, the birth of Jesus, through a woman. Oh, and I want you to know that all th although things may look bleak in our lives periodically, from the pulpit to the pews, God always has the last say-so and can change the worst of circumstances. I was speaking with someone today and they said, you know, you think it's one way and it goes another way? Although times may look bleak, God has the last say so. Nothing stops God's plans. That's the first takeaway. Nothing stops. The second takeaway that we can see in this text, going up against the powerful can be risky. Going up against the powerful can be risky. The powerful in our lives usually focuses on what we think people think about us or what they can do to us as it relates to being in a relationship with God. I always share with you, and now I can laugh, People in New England are not demonstrative. We're always looking around to see who's saying what, who, who's doing what. If you say amen, if you raise your hand, God forbid. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. You should have been here Wednesday night, worship on wow. I didn't care, I had my eyes closed. It was so good, I was waving hands and everything. Don't be ashamed of God. Get out of your comfort zone and follow God's plan through you. What has God called you to do? You don't know? 
ask God to direct you to do the Holy One's work. And if you know what God has called you to do, be obedient and do it. Where does your trust lie? First, nothing stops the plans of God. Two, going up against the powerful can be risky. And three, it's right that all of this is in the text. God always rewards faithfulness. Verse 21 says, And because the midwives feared, reverence, respect God, he gave them families. That type of faithfulness, and it's not just for the midwives, it's for us in this 21st century. That faithfulness only comes about via a true relationship with God and trust in God's promises. Faithfulness and trust in God occurs via your journey, your life paths, occurrences. We need to recognize that we will always have tests in our lives. But remember, if we are faithful, God always rewards that faithfulness. Now, don't get it into your system that faithfulness and rewards always means monetary. Peace, love, the fruit of the Spirit, those are gifts from God through that of the Holy Spirit. Nothing stops God's plans. Going up against the powerful can be risky. God always rewards faithfulness. The call to obedience and the possibility of danger. I'm going to share something with you today that I never shared about me. When you all voted me in in that November, you know, I, I read all the financial reports, understood where you all were, First Baptist financially. The search committee with Stu leading it up was wonderful. Everybody was fantastic. But when you all voted me in and I was looking out over the congregation, my heart became heavy because I knew I had an aging congregation. This week was not, this past week was not easy for me. Visiting the sick, because I love all of you all. And so I kept saying, God, you know, maybe I should wait for a different church with a younger population, one that all of us can grow together and, you know, or whatever. The call to obedience, God called me here. God called me here. And the possibility of the danger was every time, you just don't know, every time I lose one of my sheep or when my sheep become sick, and that does not mean you don't tell me. Tell me so I can pray, so I can come and see you. There's the possibility of my heart being broken. You understand what I'm saying? There's the danger of my heart being broken. However, I am standing on God's promises that if, not if, since I will be faithful, I don't know how God's going to turn this around because all of us who are aging, we're not going to have any babies right now to bring in here. But God is going to take care of First Baptist because why? God rewards what? Say it like you know it. God rewards what? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. I don't know how God is going to turn all of this around. But because I am midwife, Reverend Sheila Shows Ross, 
and I'm standing on God's promises, I'm asking you to do the same thing. Don't be ashamed of God. Tell people, come in fellowship. We're not trying to push you into church. God will lift you up and have a relationship with the Holy One if you so choose. But don't be ashamed because nothing stops God's plan. We're going to go up against risky things, meaning right now, not just the Baptist churches, the other churches, or the other faiths. We're up against being looked at as hypocrites because we say one thing and we do another and we don't act like God's people. So people don't want to be in relationship with God because of us. We have to turn that around. We have to turn that around. But remember that God honors faithfulness. And this is the last piece of the story. I have a good friend who says, the person doesn't say it anymore, you're not going to be at First Baptist that long, you know, because another church is going to scoop you up and this and that. And I say that unless, and I wasn't being blasphemous, but I said unless Jesus comes and stands in front of me and I can literally see Jesus telling me, daughter, move from First Baptist to another church, I'm here till my tenure is up. And you never have to worry about me because I'll come to you and say, look, so-and-so is looking at me. That's not the black, so-and-so is looking at me and Jesus has stood before me and said, daughter, it's time for you to move on. But I have begged God, please don't take me. Don't take me from First Baptist. Let me see how you're going to turn this around because I'm standing on your faithfulness. And guess what? We have grown. We are doing more things. We have youth on the cameras. We are growing. We have people utilizing the nursery. As Evan said, it may be small, but this journey is about now how fast we get there, but that we what? Get there. And I'm standing on God's promises. This was a struggle for me. First gentleman caught, heck, even more so, this past week. Caught, heck. The call to obedience and the possibility of danger. Amen. Is there anyone today?